don't you think it's incredible that this stone here, which was just a chunk of rock once, be turned through a very gradual process of a churning sea into this perfectly honed finish? It's almost symbolic of turning a little old beach shack into a beautiful new home, or using a sea of microscopic diamonds on a heavy duty polishing machine to gradually hone our concrete floor into a marble-like finish. This week, our floor undergoes its transformation. Honing this concrete floor is a battle of brute strength, because with this concrete slab now rock solid, it was completely impenetrable. Well, almost, because the way you cut and grind away an incredibly tough surface is with an even tougher material. And it just so happens that one of the most beautiful and prized natural gems also happens to be one of the strongest minerals known to man. Diamonds, thousands of them, all microscopically embedded into the metallic grinding teeth of this machine. And all working in unison to grind away the top layer of this surface, exposing the natural stone patterns underneath. As the grunt work of the floor grinding is done with a big heavy duty machine, a large portion of this work is also completed on hands and knees, with a small grinder needed to get in tight to the edges of these walls. With the first cut now complete, which creates the desired level of exposure for the end look of the floor, this would be the first of many processes during the week-long concrete grind and polish. We've got a, a cut to expose the aggregate, a cut to hone the surface, a cut to grout the surface and condition the surface again. We've got hardening, we've got going over removing the excess hardener, we've got taking, uh, putting more hardener down, we've got removing that excess hardener and starting the polishing process, and then you've got a varying between sort of three to four passes after that. So you're going over it sort of 10 times at the end of the day. This floor polishing process is extremely labour intensive. Although this is no ordinary technique, because this Husqvarna patented technology called Hyperfloor is in fact a densifying technique that chemically changes the structure of the concrete, giving it a marble-like finish. With the first coat being a heavy duty potassium densifier to harden the surface, the next densifying coats are designed to penetrate even deeper. As we go through our polishing process, we're using what we call lick coats on the floor. So they're very thin uh, coats that are run over of a second style of densifier, which is a lithium based densifier. And what that does is just bit by bit, it continues to increase the hardness of the matrix which surrounds the stone. So the stone aggregate being the hardest part of the concrete, what we're trying to do is harden the, the matrix of sand and cement that surrounds that, that, that stone to be as hard as the stone. As this chemical reaction is changing the structure of the concrete, the constant whirring and humming of these machines continues working all day long, as this team gradually work through each of the 10 stages to this Australian invented technique. With this impressive machinery and patented hyperfloor process now used across the world, it's proof that Australian innovation can be world leading and revolutionise a global industry. After the polished floor is completed and protected, 
the all-important blind measure would now give us the right amount of lead time for installation. Tammy. Hi Jan, how are you? Good, thank you. This is our home. It's got lovely three metre high ceilings, lots of wide space. And this is our lovely kitchen, dining and living area. Beautiful. So looking at some ideas, we're thinking of blinds, what do you think? We've got a couple of options. We can either do Roman blinds. I would probably suggest the, the roller screens. Um, you can have block out, but with the beautiful garden area, you can actually just have the screen so you can see out and nobody can see in. That's what we're thinking. Actually. Sounds That's what good. We like. yes. With Mum taking charge of the selections, the team from Cresta were on site to help us with the design and material choices. And in this room it's just that the screen. Yes. Not a problem. The black went really well with uh, the window frames that we've got here. If you add any other colours it's just going to clash. Um, in the bathroom we not like a nice white fresh look. So that's why we've gone the clean white shutter. And using shutters will not only help us to create a holiday resort feeling and point of difference to these rooms, but they will also help to control the volume of light filtered into the rooms using the angle of their blades. You can, you can position the actual blade to at the right time of the day to bring the light that you want into the bathroom. And I think that with the colour that we choose will bring light into the bathroom and brighten up the bathroom because you wanted the bathroom to be a bright space. With the check measure complete and the selections made, our teacher Scott from Hames Paint would enter the classroom. And Dad and I would officially become students for the day, as we learn some of the techniques to painting. Well, like anything, best place to start at the top. So uh, obviously when we're painting per se, we actually start from the top, work our way down. But then there's the preparation, that's the basic part of every good job. If you don't uh, get that right, then your finish is ne never going to be what you want it to be. If preparation is the key to every good paint job, then the foundation coat is what unlocks the quality of the end finish. Generally what the sealer will do for you is it'll give you good penetration into the surface, but it's more importantly it's about the gloss holdout. So getting a nice even level finish. Because we're playing with two different rates of absorption on a surface, we want to level that off as nicely as we can. With the first step being a brush down of the wall and a light sand, and after the windows are taped up, the primer, or technically sealer, can be applied to the wall. This coat is the very important step to the next two coats of paint as it will help smooth out the look of the end finish. After cutting in the wall or edging a brush into the corners, we work top down, painting the ceiling first. Using a pendulum action and standing centre of the roller, we evenly coat the ceiling. And it's these fine movements we'd use working down the walls too. With Dad and I now back on our solo mission again, we were ready to embark on the final big push to get everything painted. Starting from humble beginnings, it was the founder Henry Hames whose passion for paint led him to start making his own special blend in the Victorian country town of Ballarat back in 1935. Originally designed to be sold through his family's small hardware store in the town, it's Henry's recipe for paint that has been innovated and improved over the last 80 years. The recipe for paint hasn't changed over a great deal. There's been a lot of refinements that have come into the remote raw materials and the binders and things we use. But to break it down in simple terms, there's probably four main components that we talk about when we talk about paint. 
these four main parts to paint, the binder, the pigments, the solvent and the additives, are derived from 14 carefully selected and highly engineered ingredients, precisely crafted by the Hames Laboratory, that get batched up into each and every can of paint. And with nearly a million cans sold each year, it's this love of making paint, still in Ballarat all these years later, where this family tradition started by Henry lives on. Dad often talks about it, you know, he, he talks about, geez, I wish my father could see this, and um, look, if Henry could see it, you know, you hope to goodness he can in some respects, I think he'd be absolutely blown away. I think he'd be incredibly proud of what uh, mum and dad achieved, hopefully proud of us as the next gen, but also so proud of the people we have in our business um, and what we're creating and we continue to create. And I think the key is we just have so much fun doing it. And I think, go back 80 years, the photos I've seen of Henry, he always looked like he was having a ball as well. So yeah, it's lovely to keep the tradition going. Growing up with this iconic Australian brand and working a lifetime with paint, it's Matt's memories from his early days in this proud family-owned business that still live on today through the Hames paint colour range. Oh, fond memories. We've got some wonderful memories as kids growing up in the industry. This is probably when I was a little bit older. The wine had come out, the, the thesaurus, the dictionary, and we'd start naming colours. And when we bought our first syndicated colour system, of about 1,100 colours, we had to name them all. My wife is horrified, but there's still some paint colours uh, in our range that are named after ex-girlfriends. <laughs> and it's these colours that are derived from pigments that give each and every can of paint its unique colour value. There's a lot of oxides and, and different pigments like that that are used to derive the colour. Uh, these days it's, it's an additive more so than the product being manufactured that way. So. We manufacture in a base system with white and then three bases after that, that uh, there's then the colourant is added to it at the end of the day. So when you take, take it to the, sh the shop, uh, you have a colour card or you go to the colour wall, choose a colour, they'll have a recipe then that they add that product into our paint and, uh, and come out at the end of the day with, with the colour that you, you like. And with our ultra premium cans now off to the shop, and with the paint colours picked by our interior designers for the home, colour matching these colour ideas to the Hames paint range would be a quick and easy task for our colour expert. If you're wanting to use colour to sort of help define a space, um, you know, dark colours are great for creating sort of a more intimate feeling space and more cosy. And it's these purposefully chosen colours that should help to shape a mood for each of the spaces. A charcoal grey in the master bedroom will help create the ambience of a cosy private sanctuary, while a creamy white for the rest of the home will enhance the feeling of big, bright, fresh open spaces. Lighter colours are great for sort of opening up areas. So things like a bright white would help create Open a bigger space. Yeah, yeah. So, and also you can use colour to create sort of an optical illusion, whatever you do. So you can have fun with colour and you can make things feel bigger or look bigger or smaller by how you apply the colour to the walls. With our two colours now picked, they are batched up. And with these premium cans now ready to go, the final push to painting the home would get underway. This eight week long journey would stretch on as a full time job, seven days a week for the both of us and the majority of that time would be spent doing all of the jobs the layman wouldn't even know existed. Like neatly caulking or gluing every single inch of skirting board or window frame in the home to hide all of the gaps or filling and top coating every screw or nail hole, or sanding everything again and again, plus taping and scraping and endlessly cleaning. And it's all of the hours involved in this preparation that would take up approximately 80% of the entire job. With the rolling of the paint the other 20% of the time, 
the tag team of Dad cutting in the edges with a brush and me rolling the bulk of the walls and the ceilings would continue. The great misconception to painting is that it's a quick and easy process with not much skill. Although in truth, there is a fine art and a precise technique to getting a consistent and even look. Indeed, anybody can learn how to paint properly, although time and persistence is required to rolling and brushing your way through this learning curve. After Dad and I had finally found our rhythm, we'd enter the last big skirmish between us and the painting stage, as the third and final ceiling and wall coats and gloss coats were applied. As the battle wore on, and now into the second month of the painting, reinforcements would arrive from overseas. Not quite an armada, instead just a single Spaniard, a family friend with a keen eye for painting, and skirting boards would be her speciality. After a combined 600 hours and two full months of work, we had rolled and brushed our way to completion, saving tens of thousands of dollars from our final budget. And those budget savings would be needed for our newly installed kitchen and road cabinetry, which would be the single largest purchase for our home. With these kitchen cabinets and robes now installed, and all painted in the highest quality baked two-pack finish, they would form an important element to the end look of these spaces and their functionality. As with any building construction, the feeling of a home only really starts to take shape when all of its beautiful finishes are clicked together. And it's at the Tongue and Groove showroom in Richmond where we see the beautiful timber floor selected for our home. The timbers here are pre-finished. They're quite open grain, nice and organic, and that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for a product that would kind of complement the pinch brass, uh, the marble bench tops, but also be a nice contrast to the concrete. And, um, and using this sort of a timber with a nice wide plank is gonna give us exactly that. But also, it's gonna age over time and just continue to look better, just like the rust on the front of the house. The greatest trick to design is the skillful art of counterbalance. And it's the look of this timber floor that will help to soften the other material choices selected for the home. There's a bit of a saying, uh, what is it now? I think it's like some, something textured, something shiny, something new, something old. And that's really kind of what you try to apply to all rooms. Otherwise, you'll end up with just something that's all bright, shiny and new with no heart and soul. And selecting products that will age over time is really going to give the home a really good anchor. Um, and, you know, concrete will do that as well, but also it needs to be balanced out by a softer material such as timber. This whitewashed European oak will help to create a rustic Scandinavian feeling. Plus, with these being engineered oak boards, it also means we don't have the headache of sanding and coating this floor. The other carefully controlled element to this flooring are the selected forests in Germany and Austria where this oak is sourced from, which is not only harvested from sustainably certified forests, but it's this species that also has the robust qualities needed to satisfy the most discerning architects and interior designers. The European oak that we source is very versatile in terms of what you can do with the textures and finishes, um, as well as the colour. So the natural tannins in the European oak itself um, allows us to actually chemically treat the floors to create colours that you wouldn't be able to get in an Australian hardwood, for example. So it's got a technical quality to it that, exactly. you're, that you're specifically finding from a special region of the world which is giving you a look and a finish and a quality. That's right. With our flooring packs on site and our team of local carpenters locked, loaded and ready to go, 
they start the day-long process of laying this floor. A rubber mallet, dabs of ultra-strength adhesive and this floor nailing gun were the only tools needed for the job. As they slide and click each piece in, the rhythm of this team beats to the drum of these nail guns. And we finally reach the end of this long and exhausting milestone. Well, that was a seriously long process and I never would have guessed that there was so much involved in painting. It's not that it's hard, it's obviously highly achievable, as it was in our case. The art of painting though really is in the preparation and the fine detail, which can be very easily underestimated by the unsuspecting novice. What do you say we grab a drink? I would love one. Me too. We'll see you later. Next week, our bathrooms come to life. We delve into the world of design, meet with our artisans and craftsmen, and transform our landscape into an ocean coastline inspired sanctuary.